Hi, my name is Francisco Shavira. I'm from Sapatia.com, and today we'll be showing you how to shoot integral film in any camera that accepts pack film, such as the FP100C, FP3000B, or expired Polaroid film. The reason you're going to want to try this out is because although we can get great quality images with our SX70, you're limited as to your exposure and depth of field. When you introduce this film into, uh, say, a Bronica ETRS with a Polaroid back or 4x5, you'll be able to do tilt shift, rise and fall, and control depth of field, and the detail and tonality of the image will be far better than what you could get with old Polaroid cameras. So you'll be able to try this out, out in the field or in a studio setting, and let's get this started. And all you're going to need is a fresh pack of film and a pair of scissors. Our first step is to get rid of this front flap and you just apply a little pressure and it will pop right off. All of this will have to be done in subdued light because the film is exposed. You're going to grab your pair of scissors and cut a small slit because once you put the film into the holder it's going to apply some pressure and you need to relieve that pressure. That's why we cut a little slit. We're going to open our film holder. And the next step is to insert the pack with the side where the chemicals and the top of the film holder are. You'll see that there's a big black line. You're going to align it and apply some pressure. And close it up and you're ready to shoot. And I'm going to take out the film and take the dark slide out of my mock pack to show you that it just so happens that when inserted correctly, there isn't any part in the image that won't be left without exposing. The only thing you're going to have to think about is when you're composing your image, there will be an area that isn't hit by the film. Next, I'm going to show you how to load this film pack into a Polaroid LAN camera. It can be any LAN camera, say the Polaroid 195 or 180 would also work. You're going to open the back. Get your film pack. You're going to have to just remember to align the side where the chemical pods are. Apply some pressure, make sure that it's in correctly. Close the back and you're ready to shoot. Next I'll show you how to insert your film pack into a Bronica ETRS or you can say your Mamiya RZ67 or Hasselblad. You're just going to grab your film pack, same as before, and it's the exact same process. And now that you have your exposed image in any camera, and you land a camera, your Bronica with a Polaroid back, you're going to, in a dark room or film changing bag, you're going to take out your pack, slide out the image, the exposed image, and load it into an empty pack. And the reason you're going to want to do this is because once we were removed the flap, this front flap here, You've taken the ability of the pack to only eject one photo out. So if you don't load it into another empty pack, it could spit out two or three images at a time and we want to avoid that. So then in the dark, of course, you're going to reload it into a Polaroid camera. And as you know, when you load a pack in, it usually ejects the dark slide out. And again, uh, ejecting out your image with all the chemicals uh, and the image starts developing and that's it you wait for it to develop and you have your final image and again you're just gonna go up in the dark again reload another pack and keep shooting all right let's talk about a few details left with this tutorial one new thing that you'll be able to do now is double exposed images with px70 px680 or px600 
This technique was usually left to Polaroid land cameras or any land camera loaded with FP100C and a Polaroid Spectre camera, but now that you can manually expose images, you'll be able to do that with the PX680 or PX70 and any camera. Another thing that we have to talk about is the actual image itself. You'll have to worry about parts that are unexposed and that will show up black in your final image, not with cameras like the Polaroid LAN camera, the 4x5, but more with the 645 formats or 6x7, such as the Bronica ETRS, ETRSI, Mamiya 645, or Hasselblad, which is a 6x6 format. You'll see that uh, I have an actual image loaded in here, and you'll see that the image is much smaller than what the real image will look like, so there will be blank parts left. Another thing that we have to talk about is Polaroid LAN cameras because some versions are different than others, such as the Polaroid 420, which has a setting for 75 ISO film or 3000 ISO film, and which isn't a problem when shooting pack film, but when it comes to integral film, there's different ISOs and not all cameras let you shoot, uh, let you shoot as easily as, say, the 220 or the 100. You'll have more trouble with the 420. One way of getting around it is shooting at the setting 75 with PX70 loaded in and just set your uh, light and darken wheel accordingly. Another thing that you'll be able to do is shoot PX600, which is the black and white version, PX680, with an ND filter on top. And that'll bring down the ISO to ISO 100 and all you have to do again is set your darken light and wheel accordingly. My favorite versions to shoot with are the Polaroid 100 and the Polaroid 220 because it'll let you shoot at a setting that says 300. First of all, you're going to want to set your camera to where it says indoors without flash or bright sun or dull day also for flash. Make sure that it's set to 300 and set your lighting wheel all the way over or a few notches down depending on your scene and the light that you want. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check out our blog at snipeatsia.com for our results with the Bronica ETRS line camera and 4x5. Make sure to tweet us at snipeatsia.com with your results. Make sure to or upload your images to Flickr and tweet us with a link or email us. You can also go to snipeatsia.com forward slash submit and submit your images there. Again, thank you for watching this tutorial and check us out at snipeatsia.com.